my goodness, it's still bright. Hello, uh, welcome to We Are the Overcomers. This is Wayne Fowler. Uh, and uh, I'm still looking, I have done everything, believe it or not, believe it or not, I'm sitting here looking at the camera and what it's doing. And uh, all of the light, it, you see, if I'm looking at right now, it looks like this bright light behind me. It's not. It's not actually, it's actually, there's black curtain underneath this curtain that you see in the back. Um, I'll just call that the, the glory of God. Let's, let's just do that because I'm telling you, that's, that's not there. I'm looking at it on the camera, but it's not there. So let's, let's go through it. You can see me, so I appreciate that. Uh, I'm doing a lot more stuff here and, and I've arranged it so that maybe, let's see, is there maybe some, uh, if I modified or changed things, no, well, I'm sorry, folks, let's just deal with it. Everything is glorious and this is what we want to talk about right now. Please, everyone come in. I, 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 I know, look. I, I know this, Tiffany, about turning the desk to face the window, but in this place where I have the, I have one electrical connection and it's on the opposite wall. And uh, there's, there's just no way to try to organize it so that I can do it. I'll, I'll try to come up with another, uh, another solution, but there's a reason of course that it's being done this way. I will, I'll see what I can do. But right now, this is actually just each step closer. That's what we've got. So I really want to talk about something. Brothers and sisters, I, I had another, another dream last night. And this one just really, really was amazing to me. They're they're all, and it's a God dream, but it was it was just absolutely amazing to me. And uh and I want to talk about it. I, I'm even thinking about it now. I'm trying not to think about it because it just it affected me so deeply. And I was singing a song that only me and this other person knew was trying to bring it to my remembrance, just to give you a little snippet here. And it was about my crown of rejoicing. And it was after the rapture, okay, of the, of the bride. I was part of the bride, I was taken up and there were other crowns, rewards given. Now I'm going to start right here. So we're going to talk about that in detail because I really want to cover several different things. Now, if you look at my title, you will see that I'm associating the rapture of the bride with a reward. And I am, I'm sticking by that. Brothers and sisters, there's, there's a bunch of folks that get all frumpy and frumpy and they barely get, the rapture is not reward. Everybody's going in the rapture. Dude, I got, I'm telling you, I don't want to be in the rapture with you. I can tell you that. Uh, but I think that there are some reasons for it. And I'm sorry, that's just, the rapture is a reward, one of several, but the most blessed reward, because that means that you are part of the bride of Christ. And while the entire body of which the bride is not the whole body, it's a part of the body, the entire body will not go in the bride rapture, okay? That is going to be the greatest percentage of the church that will be left behind. 
And what's interesting is that there's so much pushback against it. I, I'm actually amazed that our other brothers and sisters, now I'm, I'm, I'm saying that, I'm not saying that they aren't believers. There, there's this big thing that says you're either a believer or you're not. And you're either saved or you're not. So if you're saved, you're going. If you're not saved, that's why you're not going. No, I do not believe that. And I have taught over the last couple of years, at least on this YouTube channel, and many years before that, there are three harvests. There are three harvests, and we're going to talk about this. The first harvest is the barley harvest, and that is the bride. The second harvest is the left behind church. That's a mid-tribulation harvest. We can work with time frames between there in the middle of Daniel's 70th week. And then there is a final harvest, and that's going to be the remnant Jews. Excuse me, let's get a little water here. That, thank you, Alma, um, that are going to be saved at the end, and they become believers there at the end of the tribulation. It's, it, it, it's I think, only contentious if you just want to cling on to traditions that have been set maybe in a church denomination that you may be a part of or something like that. But I caution against that. What you are saying, while you're not expressing that outwardly, but what you are saying is that God will not reveal. He's revealed this to my pastor or my denomination, and that's what we've done for years and years. And so anybody else that says anything else, anybody else that has pointed out some other uh, deeper meanings in Scripture or what, at least what I believe is what are deeper understandings being revealed by Abba, Daddy God, that's what I call him. He is my dad. He's my heavenly father. What Abba then reveals, he's revealing things now because it's the time for that. But if you believe that and you have faith in the fact that nothing will change, that this is the only thing, then I believe that you are going to find out the hard way that this is in fact the case. Now, here's what I would say, okay? I, I love all of you guys, and I'm not just trying to come up with something here that, that just is novel or cool, or I wanna be seen on YouTube or something like that. That's not what this is about. This is an opportunity to be able to get out the word of God in, in this particular format. And it's come in a moment very soon now where that is no longer going to be the case because a trumpet is about to sound. All right, let's start with a quick prayer. And I want to get into this and we are going to cover the synopsis of these particular things my dream with the crown of rejoicing that the rapture is received by faith it is a promise received by faith that it is also a reward should i say let me clarify the pre-tribulation harvest the first harvest the barley harvest the bridal harvest is a reward just as the other ones are a reward too right so there uh so the mid tribulation harvest is not the pre tribulation harvest there are three harvests that are separated by time and that's how those harvests go the first harvest is a reward and i'm going to show you that look i'm not just pulling these things out of the air unless the air is the holy spirit Okay, we can go by that, that standpoint. But I just want to be able to say that those things are very important. 
there are a number of rewards. They're only available to those that are believers. And so therefore, that they're, they're not all given to everyone. They're not all available to everyone. And I, that also, you know, pricks some of the others. No, if you're a believer, you get everything. No, you do not. No, you do not. And there's nothing like that throughout the entire word of scripture. I, I, I'm not expecting that I'm going to get everything that somebody else gets. I'm going to get what God has planned and purposed for me. And he's going to do that for you too. It's, it, it, and I'll tell you this, it's beyond amazing. If uh, it's, it's beyond what you can imagine because it is so great, you can't see that, but everyone does not get the same thing. This is not a cookie cutter God. He is a personal and an individual God. And I don't know, personally, I love that. I love that. And I hope you do too. But let's start with some prayer. Abba, oh my goodness. Your Holy Spirit is, is just so strong right now. And and everyone, it, it, it's like there's this hornet's nest of busyness and activity that's, incurring, that's occurring in the world today. Why? Because we know that your son, Jesus, Jesus, you are about to call up your bride. And we are so excited about it. All of us watchmen and watchwomen that are just proclaiming every single moment, all of these things that we're finding out. And we are proclaiming to all of our brothers and sisters and all of those that don't know you because we want them. We want them to know you. We want them to be ready. We want them to desire to know them, to know you, Jesus. That's what it's all about. But Abba, we know that you are the one. You are the one that has picked the bride. And you've picked the bride out of your people. And that's, oh my goodness, there's just so many examples of that. The bride is the rib that was taken out of Adam. So many things, and I've, I've said so many messages, but right now, Abba, give me the words to say that's going to make the point that this is a wonderful, glorious, and eternal reward. And this is the, one of the last few moments that people have to be a part of that. I pray that you will bless this message. Draw those to you now, to your son, Jesus, that they might be saved and they might come to know you if they don't. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I, you know, here's the thing. Let me start with this dream. Last night, because I have been, I've been, of course, praying. It is such a big deal to me, of course, as, as any of you know, about this moment. I never would have thought, as, as clearly as things have been, they get crystal clear. I, I, I mean, it's almost like just super clear as far as things are being uh, shown. And I don't think that's even the end of it. Uh, it's, it's just that we have not seen the likes of it in this generation. I know, or I feel convicted in, in my heart that Jesus is coming for his bride. And so with the closeness of it, I slept last night and I had this dream and I want to tell you about it in this dream. And it's a God dream. I don't have all of the pieces and understanding. I, 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 I'll get that. I, I have some of it. And I'm sure Holy Spirit will reveal that. And, and maybe it's so 
that I can speak it to other brothers and sisters and and maybe you might get a prompting from Holy Spirit and, and be able to fill in any of these missing pieces. And I hope that's in fact the case. But I went to sleep and uh, in this dream, what happened, I'm having regular dreams and then of course this God dream starts. In this God dream, what happens is I was initially taken on a trip and it was in the air. I knew, of course, it was the rapture of the bride. And I was with someone else. And now in this particular God dream, I didn't know who the someone else was, but the only thing that I can say is it was because I was following someone else, it was Jesus, okay? But I think the point was the reason why I didn't is because the focus wasn't on that part anymore. It was on this next part. And so I went and there, um, then I saw other people that went to the left of me. Um, and, uh, and so all I can say is that when this event takes place, there are others that will be left behind. So that's, that does not surprise me. I know where that goes, but I went straight. I didn't go anywhere. And I went into this room and in this room, it, it was filled with music. It was a very intimate setting. And I was with, now I was with this woman. Now, maybe that's only, um, uh, you didn't, uh, it was with this woman. I don't know who the woman was, but there was a, 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 a closeness and intimacy with this person, okay? I, I'm not sure what that represents. I was not uh, allowed or to look at the person. So in other words, what that tells me is that it was not meant to be a particular person. So uh, what I think is because I'm a man, this woman was supposed to indicate the intimacy between a man and a woman so that we can understand a closeness together. This woman, she had put her head up against mine like that. She was so glad to see me. And she wanted to sing this song with me. Uh, and yes, dear sister Paulette, I'm sorry I didn't tell you that I was coming on. Uh, it, it's, it was meant to be that way. And so I'm glad to see you here. Everybody, please welcome dear sister Paulette. And uh, thank you, sister for being here. Yes, so glad to see you too. So it, it was a, a closeness and she was saying that she wanted to sing this song with me. And in, in the dream, it was like we had this song that the two of us used to sing together or well, like it was something that was just between us, right? And, and I was thinking, so she starts singing these words. She says, do you remember it? Do you remember it? Sing it with me. And I'm starting to, I'm thinking like, yeah, um, ah, yeah. Oh, so she would sing a line and then I would, oh yeah. And I started getting more and more into it and starting to sing it. And, and then I would flub over. Oh, yes, that's right. There's 
I've forgotten that word before. But then my heart is being filled with this music from this song. And I'm thinking about it now because it was just such a blessing. This music just resonated deep within me. And I cannot, as I'm telling you now, remember all of the words to the song. I can remember them as I can see it, but it seems like it was purposely kept from me that I could not yet know all of those words. But I did at the time I was singing it in the dream. And I can remember there was something about closeness and uh, the romance of love and, and, and these types of things that was there in this experience together. And then there was uh, this last line in the song that I that I do remember, that I was supposed to remember. And that was this. This is your crown of rejoicing. Now, I cannot do justice to what the music was and how that went over. But I knew as I was singing that, I was being given the crown of rejoicing. And I woke up and I, I was just like, this is your crown of I was trying desperately to remember all of the words to the song. And I couldn't, this is your crown. And I couldn't do that. It was constantly being redone over, remember this. This is your crown of rejoicing. And I couldn't even remember. I remembered, of course, that there were five crowns, but I couldn't remember right off the top of my head as I'm doing this. What's the crown of rejoicing? What's the crown of rejoicing? Uh, I, 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 I know about the crown of righteousness and I, you know, these types of things, but I couldn't remember that. And so that was something that was important. And that was something that I had then made sure that I looked up and that was, now you're going to love this brothers and sisters. <sighs> wow. I went up and looked up this thing and then I snapped this. I want you to take a look. Okay. Because I printed it out so that I can want you to see what this is. Okay. There you go. All right. I want you to see this whole thing. Okay. All right. So if you can see that, that's great. If you can't, I'll go ahead and just read it. But I wanted to point out, it says, this is from the ChristianTruthCenter.com. And I, it pulls up this crown. It has the headline, Crown of Rejoicing. It's one of the types of crowns in heaven. Of course, we know that crown of rejoicing is a reward. I want you to hold on to that because this is very important too. A reward to saints for their lifetime work on earth awarded in the judgment seat of Christ. And it's from 1 Thessalonians 2.19. For what is our hope? or joy, or crown of rejoicing, are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? Oh, my goodness. But I also want you to look up at the top, brothers and sisters, and what time does it have? It has 8.54. And I just like came out of my skin with joy. What is that? That's 4.58. I'm four, five, eight, I'm four, five, eight. And for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, it was from another God dream in which Jesus was 
singing to me. So it's another thing involving another song. Jesus was singing to me as a confirmation of another God dream that was given by him. And he was singing to me. I'm four, five, eight. I'm four, five, eight. And I woke up laughing about it. He was initially singing to me in the first dream. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. And many of you know that song. Uh, and, uh, and so, but he was singing it, it with different words to me. Uh, uh, I'm on my way to breaking through because you, Wayne, were made for something new. I'm on my way. Well, there was a confirmation that I had asked for, excuse me, uh, about whether that was from God, because I didn't want any other message from the enemy. Of course, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It does. I want a confirmation. This is you. And based on the other dream, of course, about him coming in uh, to rapture his bride. And in that Second confirmation, that's where he was singing. I'm four, five, eight. I'm four, five, eight, using the same song and with that being different. And when I woke up, I was giggling about it. I was like, what on earth is four, five, eight? And I, I just had the prompting of Holy Spirit said, look it up in Strong's. Well, I'm not kind of a Strong's person, you know, I, I mean, I know some Strong's numbers and things like that. I didn't know that particular one. Uh, and so, uh, and I didn't, I never would have associated it with a Strong's number is what I'm trying to say. So in this number, I look it up and it is Elimelech. God is king. And I knew immediately our great king was giving me confirmation that it was him and he's on his way, brothers and sisters. And that's where I see this and I get this again, four, five, eight, the crown of rejoicing, the crown also of a king. I'm just, just I'm putting all of these things together and it just really, really, it, it, it just got me. It just really got me. And so here's where I want to go. I want to go with that. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. So let's talk about crowns. Let's talk about rewards. And let's talk about the rapture, shall we? And so this is one I want to do uh, quickly talk about. And uh, then we're going to go into some deeper things about the promises of God about the rapture being a promise and about it being received by faith. It's not given to everybody. It's not. It, let's just go through this. There's so many things here. So what are the five heavenly crowns that believers can receive in heaven? So this is from gotquestions.org. I, I love uh, this particular uh, website because there's a lot of condensing of answers to questions that make things easier. And so I do that. Okay, so the answer is there are five heavenly crowns mentioned in the New Testament that will be awarded to believers. They are the imperishable crown, the crown of rejoicing. That's what I've just been singing about. The crown of righteousness, the crown of glory, and the crown of life. The Greek word translated crown is Stephanos, the source of the name Stephen the martyr, and means, quote, a badge of royalty, a prize in the public games, or a symbol of honor generally, unquote. Used during the ancient Greek games, it referred to a wreath or garland of leaves placed on a victor's head as a reward for winning an athletic contest. As such, this word is used figuratively in the New Testament of the rewards of heaven God promises 
to those who are faithful. Paul's passage in 1 Corinthians 9, verses 24 and 25, best defines for us how these crowns are awarded. And we're going to go through these uh, quickly, and I'm going to highlight the crown of righteousness. Remember, we've already tied uh, uh, rewards and promises, okay? So let's, I want you to hold on to that. Let's go through these. The imperishable crown. That's listed in 1 Corinthians 9, verse 24 and 25. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. It's a prize. It's a reward. It's not given to everybody. You've got to earn it. You've got to work for it. You work for rewards. You don't for something that's given as a gift. This is not a gift. It's a reward, okay? And so if, if there's any problem with that, then you've got a problem with the word I, and your understanding of it. I would question if you want to make everything free as a gift other than salvation, then I, I suggest that you seriously get out in prayer and you take a look at what we're going to discuss in all of these passages because they are rewards. They are prizes for an effort. And that's why the Apostle Paul is saying you got to run hard in an athletic contest. Only one guy wins the prize. And that's because they're all running against each other. You got to work for it. This is something you got to work for to obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate, meaning disciplined, in all things. Now, these guys, the athletic folks, they do it to obtain a perishable crown. But we do it to receive an imperishable crown. All things on this earth are subject to decay and will perish Jesus urges us not to store up treasures on earth where moth and rust dust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. It's Matthew 6, 19. This is analogous to what Paul was saying about the wreath of leaves that was soon to turn brittle and fall apart, but not so the heavenly crown. Faithful endurance. Ooh, perk ears, perk ears. Where do we hear that in Revelation 3? Okay. Faithful endurance wins a heavenly reward, which is an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. 1 Peter 1, 4. Two, the crown of rejoicing. The crown of rejoicing, 1 Thessalonians 2, 19. For what is our hope, our joy, our crown of rejoicing. Is it not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus at his coming? The apostle Paul tells us in Philippians 4 verse 4 to rejoice always in the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We rejoice now in you, Jesus. We rejoice, Abba. Oh, oh my goodness. For all the bountiful blessings our gracious God has showered upon us, as Christians, we have more in this life to rejoice about than anyone else. Amen. Luke tells us there is rejoicing even now in heaven. Luke 15, 7. The crown of rejoicing will be our reward where God will wipe away every tear. There shall be no more death, no sorrow, no crying. There shall be no more pain for the former things will have passed away. That's Revelation 21, verse 4. Oh, dear. I'm getting that crown, too, brothers and sisters. Praise God. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Three, the crown of righteousness. I will caveat this. The rapture is a reward. So what are we looking at right now? Right now we're looking at the crown of righteousness. And that's listed in 2 Timothy verses 4, excuse me, chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, this is the Apostle Paul saying, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, 
the righteous judge will give me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all those who have loved his appearing. We inherit this crown through the righteousness of Christ, which is what gives us a right to it. Now, there's a right to it, and without which it cannot be obtained. Because it is obtained and possessed in a righteous way, and not by force and deceit, as earthly crowns sometimes are, it is an everlasting crown, promised to all who love and eagerly wait for his return. I'm going to stop right here, brothers and sisters, and this is where I'm telling you. If you're not watching, if you are not longing, you are not going to get this crown. And here's what I'm saying. I've heard a number of whom I do not discount are brothers and sisters. They may just be being used by the enemy, mockers, scoffers, you name it. But I'm not discounting that they may be saved Christians saying that uh, that. Um, this that they may lose rewards but they're still going to be in the rapture i'm going to show you the rapture is a reward and you definitely are not going to get this reward if you are not watching if you are not longing for him you are not doing this that's not my word it's coming from the word of god okay all right now this crown is uh, uh i'm sorry let me take a step back uh, it is an everlasting crown, a promise to all who love the Lord and eagerly wait for his return. Through our enduring discouragements, persecutions, sufferings, or even death, we know assuredly our reward is with Christ in eternity. This crown is not for those who depend upon their own sense of righteousness or their own sense of work such as an attitude breeds only arrogance and pride, not a logging or a fervent desire to be with the Lord. I would go further with that. And that's what I'm saying. I want to point out a couple of things. For those folks who do not believe in the rapture at all, which is so plainly throughout the Bible, Old Testament to New, because they say the word rapture is not in the Bible. You get your Latin Vulgate, read it, and then talk to me, okay? All right, that word rapture is there. It's the harpazo. It's the snatching away, like it or not, whether you read it in Greek, English, or in, uh, in Latin. I don't care. It's in there. And it's covered every which way. It's covered in all three harvests, right? But it's, and, and so for those folks, and that's why I'm saying this as a side, those are only for escapists. He's not going to take you out. You're going to go through this whole tribulation. You are going to suffer persecutions and you are going to die for Jesus. Okay. I'm thinking like, wow. Wow. Here's where I would show my difference. Okay. Just because you, and, and I'm speaking here in generally, the person that might feel that way, male, female, I don't care. If you believe that you have to go through all of this in order to be prepared, I know two things. One, you are not prepared. You're not prepared and you will not go. Okay, plain and simple. That's why you are not going to be in that group. I'm going to say that you are not in that group if you hold that view. Okay. And I'm also going to point out if you are trying to say that the bride is just trying to get out of it and is not suffering any way, you are so greatly mistaken because it's the bride that has willingly accepted the persecutions. It's the bride that has willingly suffered through all of these discouragements, sufferings, even up to and including death. Interestingly, I can also say that because been there, died, came back. Okay. Um, and, uh, and, and so I'm saying all those that are part of the bride have willingly picked up their cross, as Jesus said, and followed him. 
that cross is an instrument of death. It is not easy. It is not a walk in the park. If you think that it is, you really don't understand what you should be doing right now. I, I'm sorry, brother. I'm just going to want to get this down. You really need to understand that. Mm, okay. The rapture of the bride. The bride gets a crown and it's a reward. And that's one of them. I'm going to tie it to the promise as well. Okay. So I want you to see this. Let's go to the fourth crown, the crown of glory. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Though Peter is addressing the elders, we must also remember that the crown will be awarded to all those who long for and love his appearing. This word glory is an interesting word referring to the very nature of God and his actions. It entails his great splendor and brightness. Recall Stephen, who while being stoned to death was able to look to the heavens and see the glory of God in Acts chapter seven. The word also means that the praise and honor we bestow to God alone is due him because of who he is. It also recognizes that believers are incredibly blessed to enter into the kingdom, into the very likeness of Christ himself. For as Paul so eloquently puts it, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Romans 8.18. Amen. And then finally, the crown of life. That's out of Revelation uh, chapter 2, verse 10. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Now, that's very interesting. Things that you are about to suffer. Interestingly, the bride is already willing to and has suffered. And through all of these has grown and is preparing herself, okay? Do not prepare all of those things that you are about to suffer. And that's why I say the, uh, why we can look at the Philadelphia church as being the part of the church, the part of the body that is pre-tribulation raptured and the rest is left behind. And here's one thing that you can see. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. Maybe they haven't suffered like the bride already has. Consider that, folks. Be faithful. Uh, it says, indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested. Hmm? Maybe they haven't been tested yet, right? And you will have tribulation 10 days. Be faithful unto death and I will give you a crown of life. So they will then have tribulation. Notice though, they will not have wrath. Okay, they're the church and the church is not suffering wrath. They, however, are not free from tribulation as I read to you before, right? This crown is for all believers, that, uh, but it is especially uh, dear to those who endure sufferings, who bravely confront persecution for Jesus, even to the point of death, right? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop on that one because I want to go ahead and get to these other things. Where do we get these? Where, where do we get these crowns, right? So we cover all of those crowns and we get them at the judgment seat of Christ. And the judgment seat of Christ, uh, uh, it, it, it tells us, excuse me, in Romans, uh, uh, it says, so I'm going to pull this out. The judgment seat of Christ does not determine our salvation, that matter was settled by Christ's sacrifice on our behalf. That's what we know as far as the rewards or lack of those will happen at that moment. You will be able to have that judged. What you did in that life during, during that time will happen at that, big, at that time and rewards will happen at that particular point. Everything that you've done will be judged uh, wood, hay, and stubble, 
uh, gold, silver, precious stones, right? Everything is going to be weighed. It's going to be tried by God's fiery judgment, not in salvation. In a way, it's testing it to see if it's true, right? And so everything that's just worthless is going to disappear. Everything that's eternal will remain. That's how that works, okay? And that will happen right after the rapture takes place. So that's what I'm saying. In each instance, in each grouping, we will appear before the Lord. Then we will receive the rewards that will be given to us at that time, okay? Uh, and uh, uh, so I, I just want to look at that. You don't get all of the rewards. Uh, and, and I point out some things. We, we've got one that we call the martyr's crown, right? And that's what I'm saying. Unless you're all martyrs, that's the only way you're all going to be able to receive the martyr's crown. Do, we, do you know anyone that actually died in Christ that wasn't a martyr? I think so. So is that person going to get a martyr's crown? Well, likely not, because there's a crown for attaining to something that no one else attained to. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that crown is reserved for those who have been able to persevere in that particular area. They get recognized and crowned for that, right? There's the same thing. So if you do not attain a particular crown, does that mean that, uh, that uh, well, let me say it this way. What it does mean is it is it's, I think, a, a clear delineation of the fact that not everybody receives all the crowns, right? Um, maybe there are some that actually do receive all the crowns. Um, I don't know. Well, I'm just trying to be able to say, don't put everybody in the same box because you're an individual and you're not, right? So that's what I'm saying. Let's go in and talk about the rapture being the promise, okay? I hope that at least at this point right here that you can see that a crown for loving his appearing and longing for and watching for him, there's a crown for that, right? That is a reward. That is a prize for that. You work for that. You don't work for your salvation. You work for the rewards, right? There's an effort that you put into that. And there is a reward that is uh, given for that. Uh, do you follow me? Okay. Now, let's also, let's not stop there. I also want you to understand, hopefully, I'm going to be able to uh, get this out here. Um, and... Uh, like that the, I'm sorry, I ended up getting, uh, I do tend to, sometimes I look at this and, and just like uh, cool cat Kelly, uh, he ends up, you can sometimes when you see the, the, the chat sitting there, it can catch your attention. So I don't want to get caught off. Um, that we obtain promises of God by faith. Now, I, I don't think that there should be any question of that, right? And uh, so here is what I want to say, and I've said this before, and I think that there are just others. First, they want to say that, no, if, if, if you're saved, you go in the rapture. That's it. Well, there's two assumptions here. First, one is that there's only one harvest. It's the harvest the rapture resurrection event, even though, even though the Bible shows us there are different sections to the first resurrection, that there are three groups that are part of the first resurrection, because the first resurrection is not an order, it is a type. There's the first type, there's the second type. The first type is for the righteous, the second type is for the unrighteous. 
And it doesn't happen all at once. Not everybody gets to jump in there on the, on the first one. It is, however, a promise. And, uh, and as far as the promise goes, uh, promises are received by faith. So this is the simple way that I want to be able to say, say it. We have great and precious promises by God. All, all, there is not a single promise given by God in his word that is not received apart from faith. And I'm going to show you some of that, okay? We're going to cover scripture that covers that. If you have any question, then, uh, then okay. So uh, I don't think that there's any question, or at least I hope not, that the rapture is a promise. The rapture of the bride is a promise, okay? Pre-tribulation rapture is a promise. And, uh, but then they want to separate it as uh, all of the promises excluding the rapture, they are received by faith, but you don't have to have faith in the rapture in order to get that. Ixnay on that right now. I'm going to, no, that is not true. That is not true. If you are wanting to dissect the word and piecemeal the promises of God, that is wrong, folks. That is absolutely wrong. Do not do that. Uh, there are warnings against doing that to God's word. I would heed those warnings if I were you, okay? So the promises of God are received by faith. The rapture is a promise. So it must be received by faith in order to, in order for you to receive that promise. And I'm going to show that to you in God's word that that is in fact the case. We're gonna to tie together the promises, the reward, and the faith, okay? That's what I want you to get from this. Before I do that, I'm going to read, we obtain the promises of God by faith. This is an article by Charles Spurgeon, okay? So I'm not just picking up some, uh, you know, uh, some advertisement, uh, of course, on some social media site or somewhere. I'm, I'm going with somebody that has some weight at least to some understanding of God's word to be able to list this out. This is by Charles Spurgeon. I'm gonna read uh, 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 part, an excerpt of his article, We Obtain the Promises of God by Faith. The promises of God are to the believer an inexhaustible mine of wealth. Happy is it for him if he knows how to search out their secret veins and enrich himself with their hidden treasures. In them, he will find all manner of restoratives and blessed elixirs. He shall find therein an anointment for every wound, a cordial for every faintness, a remedy for every disease. Blessed is he who is well skilled in heavenly pharmacy and knows how to lay hold on the healing virtues of the promises of God. The promises are to the Christian a storehouse of food. Blessed is he who can take the five barley loaves and fishes of promise and break them into his 5,000 necessities shall all be supplied and he is able to gather up baskets full of fragments. Yea, they are the jewel room in which the Christian's crown treasures are preserved. Are you hearing some of these things? I want you to pick up on several of these things, right? I also want you to pick up on how he's talking about searching out the secret veins and their hidden treasures. I'm going to take an aside and just I want you to keep that in mind because we're going to cover almost three verse seven. Surely the Lord will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. He's doing that now. And those prophets are not what I'm talking about, not some so-called present day prophet. I don't call my prophet. There are prophets. They are listed there in the Bible. He's given them all of the information. He's revealed to them all of the secrets. And now he's revealing to us 
what that really is. And we go like, oh, wow, why didn't we see that before? It's not something that is completely separate. It's already there. He put it in there. And, and now we are getting to see it because it's coming to fruition now. Um, anyway, so I, uh, I will not uh, continue with this. It's, it's, a, it's an excellent one, the promises, the law, and the faith. Furthermore, all things under the covenant of grace are by promise. Oh, wait, how total is that? All, folks, all things under the covenant of grace are by promise. There's not one that's apart from promise, okay? The law had blessings for works. It had only curses for transgressors since the blessings were never obtained by any who were under the law. But the covenant of grace says not do this and live, but it says, I will and you shall. Mention anything you will that is contained in the covenant and I will show it by promise. That's what we got. I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to cover that. The promises of God are to the believer an inexhaustible mine of wealth. There's promises amid trial. There are promises in the present and it's a wonderful article, but I'm just pointing that out this is not just something that you can say, well, yeah, maybe that promise or, okay, well, I want to get this promise over here, but not that one. No, because I don't want to have a faith in it. Therefore, you know, I, no, no, no. Okay. So all the promises of God, all of the promises under the covenant, and this, uh, if anyone questions, that the uh, a rapture of the bride is not a covenant promise. I don't know how else you would characterize it. It is a promise, folks. Okay. It's a promise from God and it is received by faith. Now, how do we know that? Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to read, I'm going to read all of Hebrews 11 and I'm going to highlight the faith needed to believe in the rapture, okay? And it's going to come out of that. But we're not just going to use that one. I'm going to give you it all, okay? Hebrews 11, and I'm going to read it from the English Standard Version just to be able to just uh, easily get the word across, okay? Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, starting at verse 1. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the convictions of things not seen. For by it, the people of old received their commendation. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous. God commending him by accepting his gifts. And through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. Oh my goodness, he had faith. Okay, now I want you to perk up on this. Uh, verse five and six, it's big, it's important. By faith, Enoch, the Gentile first rapture folks, by faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death. And he was not found because God had taken him. Now, let's not stop there because there are people who go, oh, yeah, well, he wasn't raptured. Or that, uh, you know, uh, you know, let's not do that. I'm going to continue. Let's read. Now, let's continue. Uh, now, before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. Verse 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please him for, don't even stop there, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Now, I'm going to stop there. Verse five and six. You need to like print that out, paste it, you know, put a copy of it on your mirror. Look at it because that really says it right now. 
where we are talking about in Hebrews chapter 11, he starts from the very creation of the universe, then going into Genesis a little farther into Abel, uh, Cain and Abel. Then he goes a little farther in there to talking about Enoch, right? All of this is based on faith. And I, I'm contending to you that in verses five and six is talking about everything else again, that Enoch was taken up. He was taken up. He is our example of the pre-tribulation rapture of the bride. Why was he taken up? Because it was some grace thing. Well, there's grace involved, but it says specifically by faith, by faith. And what else does it go on to say? If he didn't have this faith, he couldn't please God. Because without faith, it is impossible to please him. And he goes on to say that whoever, that, uh, whoever would draw near to God, he must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seeks him. Okay, wait a minute. Rewards those who seek him. Let's go back to that uh, uh, crown of righteousness. For there is laid up for me uh, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but to also to all those who have loved his appearing. I got that. That's interesting. What If you're looking, you're longing, you're searching for, you're seeking him, we are seeking you, Jesus. We're seeking you, Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Enoch, and what's very interesting, if, you, if you've if you seen my last message, you understand that that issue with Enoch, that's the base name where we get Hanukkah from. His name, Enoch, is in Hanukkah because Hanak is his name in Hebrew. And his word, his name means dedication. Hanukkah, the feast of dedication. Do you get that? I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping you see this. Oh my goodness, because this is the last moment. Don't think for a minute, brothers and sisters. Oh, dear sister Sue, yes, 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 yes. Glad to see you here. Uh, and that's okay. You can go back and you can see it. I'm so glad that you made it. I am so seriously wanting you to think that this, this is so important, and I want to nail this down. I want, Jesus was nailed down. I want to nail his word down. You really need to hold on to this. The rapture of the bride, the pre-tribulation rapture, there is a crown for it. Why? Because there it is a reward. There is a the rapture Pre-tribulation rapture is a reward. Now, if you haven't heard me say that at least 20 times right now, the rapture is a reward. Now, and and when I say the rapture, I'm sp speaking of the pre-tribulation rapture of the bride. And what's interesting, so is the mid-tribulation rapture, but there are different crowns for that, okay? That's what I'm wanting to point out. Each has its own rewards for this. It's done. Why can't it be the same reward? Why? Because you didn't get that reward. You can't, you, you can't get that same reward if it's already been uh, awarded to someone else. But you can also then try to get a different reward, right? Uh, and so that's, that's what I'm trying to say salvation, free gift. But the rewards are a prize that is earned. And the rapture of the bride of Christ is a reward. And it's a reward received by faith. Now, let me say, if I haven't pointed this out right now, what, what you've seen about this as far as faith I'm not finished with Hebrews chapter 11 yet. Let's continue. By faith, Noah being warned of God, because we're, we're, we're going along, right? Uh, we're still, we're just going down 
from Genesis chapter one. Now we're in, uh, that's interesting. So we got verse seven here, which actually could then coincide with Genesis chapter seven. If you look at it by faith, Noah being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this, he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. Okay. Now, then we go on by faith. Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place where he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to live in the land of promise. Do you see where we're going with this? Nothing in this life through the whole thing. The child of promise, all those who was, uh, died in the wilderness, they all died in faith, not having received things promised, but having seen them and greeted them afar off and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles here on earth. They received, uh, they, they died in faith. That's the important thing. There are some that died. We know that there are those that did not. By faith, Moses, by faith, people cross the Red Sea. But, and he goes on, by faith, Abraham, when he was tested, tested, not wrath on him, he was tested. That's tribulation, testing, right? And I'm sure being tested to off, offer your son as a sacrifice, that's a pretty strong test, wouldn't you say? Right? Right. So, and what does he end this on? Verse 32. And what more shall I say? I mean, he's covered the whole plan of God, and, and, and it's all by faith. And he says, for time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, uh, Jephthah, of David, Samuel, and the prophets, who, through faith, conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, ding, 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 Stop the mouths of lions, quench the power of fire, escape the edge of the sword, escape, ding, 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 ding. And uh, you, you see this? Were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Oh, my goodness. Women received back their dead by resurrection. Ding, 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 ding. Okay. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release so that they might attain rise uh, excuse me, might rise again to a better life. Others were sown, sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins and sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated. Oh my goodness, brothers and sisters, do you get this? Do you get this? Please, I do hope that you get this. The rapture of the bride, the pre-tribulation rapture is a reward and it's received by faith. Now, I've had those. Again, I, I, I had a, another person that had mentioned, you know, and I pointed out, look, I gave it as bullet points. It's very easy to see. Yeah, all of the promises of God are received by faith, bullet point one. Bullet point two, the, prom, uh, the rapture of the bride is a promise of God, bullet point two. Bullet point three, therefore, a, a, you know, all of the all of the promises of God are received by faith. Therefore, all, uh, you know, the rapture is received by faith. And if you do not have faith in the rapture, you will not receive it. Bam. OK, I mean, that's that seems to me pretty simple, wouldn't you think? So what I get are those that want to say, no, 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 no. And no, no, no. They will just ignore that all of these verses are in the Bible. I, and it's just say, no, no, just, just no. All right. Well, you can hold that position. And it, to me, that just seems like uh, self-deception. Uh, now, there, and it is. If you want, you are self-deceived if you want to believe that. When, when you've got entire chapters of the Bible saying that the promises are received by faith. I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I pray for you. I pray that your eyes are open to this right now in Jesus' name. Uh, 
Max asks, once received, always received, can you lose the rapture reward? And the answer is before it happens, yes, you can. And uh, that is what Paul warns us. He says, take care that no one steal your crown or take your crown from you. Can you lose that crown? Oh, yes, you can. That's why it's a reward, right? You, you know, you, you, you can't give up on it. You can't turn away from it. If you drop out of a race and you just decide, okay, you, you guys, go ahead on. I'll catch up with you. Well, is the race stopping and is it waiting for you? No, no. Okay. It's, it's just, it's, it's, it's a race. You got to continue in the race. You've got to get to the end of the race. If you fall out of the race, you're not going to receive that reward. Now, what I will say opposite to this, in contrast to this, any rule, any reward received is eternal. OK, you can lose your reward before you get it. But once you receive it, it is eternal. You do not lose it ever. OK. All right. So that's 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 what that's what we mean. OK. Uh, uh, so once saved, always saved there. Max is asking again, but not once saved, always raptured. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So that's what I'm saying. So the mid-tribulation rapture, uh, those that are left behind, forget about this whole thing. Uh, everyone's unsaved. No, because that's not true. Can you be a believer and not have faith in certain promises? I hope that you see the answer is yes. Okay? So... Uh, and how many times do we have those folks that say, no, 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 I don't believe that. I don't believe that. If you don't believe that, then guess what? You don't have the faith in that, whatever the that is, okay? That's all I'm trying to say. Yes, you can. It, even if you're going on, if you don't persevere till the end, right? What does Revelation th uh, chapter 3 tell us about the church of Philadelphia? Because you have patiently endured, patiently endured. Not that it's just like for a time you endured, but then you kind of give up. It doesn't say that. You've patiently endured up till this moment where it takes place. So, yes, you can lose rewards. What, uh, you, you know, It doesn't mean, and just like Sister Paulette is saying, it really couldn't be any easier than that. If you don't believe, you won't receive. It really is the case. You can't receive any promises of God that's in the covenant. You cannot receive any of them apart from faith. You've got to have faith in healing. You've got to have faith in the adoption. You've got to have faith in the inheritance. You've got to have faith in everlasting life. You've got to have, and see, here's the one that's a part. Uh, you can't even have salvation apart from faith, right? So you got to have that. The only difference is that we're saying is that believing in faith for salvation is the free gift. The free gift is eternal life not anything else. You still got to have faith in the promises in order to receive the faith. Anyone that was got like in the Bible, did anyone receive their healing when he would heal pay, people apart, apart from faith? The answer is no. Okay. And uh, and, and did he heal them all the same way? It's like, oh, they've all got the same faith. They were all healed the same way. It was all the same problem that they had. No, there is one huge overarching problem. Of course, that's sin. We know that. And he took care of that with his death on the cross. And he was buried and he was in the grave for three days. He arose from the grave, conquering death. 
he paid for the penalty of sin on that cross. It's, it's just, it's so sad that I think, and, and this is what, what, what we're seeing here, right? Lukewarm, lukewarm Christians. Can you be a Christian and be lukewarm? Well, God tells us in his word that we have the church of Laodicea. They are a church. And it's it, what I'm saying is like, everyone like, oh, well, that's, that's what they call the group of people. But every person in there was not saved. Does that even make any sense to you? No, you're not going to call a group of unsaved people. You're not going to call them a church. They're not in a church. Now, we have churches that have a lot of unsaved people in there, uh, but you're going to have, they're not a church without some saved people in there, okay? I, I just don't see any churches, when he lists his churches, that that all of them are not saved. Even when he talks about the dead church, what's uh, what is it, Smyrna, the dead church? He says everything is like, but you still have a few that have not soiled their garments, right? And you're like, so even there, he's not going to have a church that is going to be devoid of believers. There's going to be some faithful that are going to be in there regardless, or he's not going to call it a church. He's going to call it the world. Okay, and he does that throughout scripture. So I'm hoping that 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 you will believe on that. Okay. Trust, trust in Jesus, trust in that. And that's what we're talking about here. Yep. Uh, Sister Sue is talking about what's going to happen. Yep. They are going to be refined, those that are left behind. Although, now there's going to be, there's a lot of people that are not believers, right? We know that. But those that are left behind, just like we see, are, are we going to see that, um, that Alicia, uh, in, uh, when, when, that he did not believe uh, in Elijah, right? No, he was, he was there with Elijah. They were two. He was left behind. And, uh, and, uh, and so, uh, but Elijah was taken, right? He sees that. He believed that he was, uh, I don't know, maybe he didn't believe that he was going to go. He wanted to keep, Elisha was telling the others, you know, your master is going to be taken from you today. What did he say? This is our second Kings chapter two. Uh, he said, be quiet. He didn't want to hear it, right? Yeah. What do you guys know? What, what do we see, right? I get the impression as he wants to tell everybody to be quiet, not because it was hurting him. You know, he's thinking like, oh, maybe he didn't believe it was really going to happen, right? Like many of our brothers and sisters are, are trying to tell us, oh, but you're just an escapist or, or you just are afraid to suffer persecution. You have no idea. You have no idea. Um, I can speak from my own, uh, persecutions. I can speak from my own sufferings. I can speak to, uh, to, uh, to how the, the, the devil has tried to just trounce me constantly. The effort that it takes, the, the learning process, the, the, the building of the faith and that sort of that, that doesn't come that doesn't come from you saying, well, you just tell me what the date is and then I will I will look on that day. That's not how it works. And if you are that type of person and you're saying like, oh, well, he says it's just going to be on this day. Well, I'm not saying that. Uh, the only time you're going to be able to say it's going to be on this day is after you've been left behind because then you're going to be able to find a day for the mid-tribulation rapture. But I, I'm really believing that the pre-tribulation rapture of the bride, that's not happening on a feast of the Lord. It's not happening on the feast of the Lord. We have many people now that are trying to, uh, and, and, and I think reasonably so, 
where we're sitting here, as we were going through each of these feasts, and, and we see so much of God and and everything he's doing, we get in and we, and we want to seek even deeper relationship with him, right? Oh, my goodness. And then we think, wait a minute. Why didn't it, didn't it happen yet? Well, each little bit, each little bit being revealed, the secrets as we're looking for that in it, it's the honor of kings to search out a matter. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter. Conceal it? What? Uh, our cool cat just had a, a short video that he did uh, yesterday, and and I really loved it. I really loved it. He he gets pretty snarky sometimes, but I do like uh, what he was talking about as far as uh, the december 7th date of hanukkah and he was talking about how we looked at all of this last year and we're thinking like wait a minute you know kind of what gives right weren't we all looking at that and we have the mockers and scoffers going oh, God, look at you guys oh my goodness oh god what's the next day huh or we have those then because they don't have any faith in the rapture at all don't you read your bible it says you know, no man knows the day or the hour. And I'm thinking like, if you opened up, are you, does your Bible just have a, over 1,200 pages? And on every page, it says, no man knows the day or the hour. No man knows the day or the hour. No man knows that because it appears that many oftentimes that's the only scripture you appear to know. And I'm thinking like, you really need to read your Bible. Because if you did, you would find out that that's not for the pre-tribulation rapture of the bride. It's going to be for those that are left behind. I would even go so far as to say that that's going to be the remnant of the Jews. They are definitely not going to know the day or the hour. It's going to completely catch them off guard. Why? Because they've never believed in Jesus. And it's this whole final week of Daniel is going to be for that purpose. They, they, they've been a hard-headed, stiff-necked people. But this is going to catch their attention, and it's going to bring them around. All right? Uh, we'll see everyone. I, I, I see everyone. There are some people that have to go to bed. I understand that, folks. And I love you all. If you have to go, I understand. Um, and uh, uh, Reuben, love you too, brother. Uh, it, it's if it happens on Hanukkah, I really do agree. Three, 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 grace that it will really surprise the Jews. Now, what's interesting about that is that from the Jews' standpoint, that truly is the feast of the Jews. And what's interesting is how it ties in. They call it Second Tabernacles. Oh, wait a minute. That's why we thought Tabernacles. Ah, oh, so cool. But then when you start and you get in and studying it and through revelation of Holy Spirit, and, and, and then we go like, Eureka, look, look at what we found. Or when you see that, wait a minute, people saying that no man knows the day or the hour. You can never know a date or anything. Why do we have dates in the Bible? Why do you think God's word specifically has dates? Do you think that they're like for nothing? Oh, yeah, they're for something, but not for the rapture. You can't know that. But you know, well, I'm just thinking that maybe the enemy is trying to keep you from knowing that you really can keep you from watching, keeping you from longing, keeping you from getting into the word and actually finding out what it says in there. And, and, and it's going like, uh, turn to Romans chapter 8. What does it say in your Bible? Mm, I'm reading here and it has this verse. No man knows the day or the hour. Oh, nice. Hebrews chapter 11. Can you turn to that? And Okay, I'm thinking. Um, my Bible says no man knows the day or the hour. Okay, you can see, of course, I'm, 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 uh, I'm, I'm being tongue in cheek. That's not the deal. But you can't hold. Do you think that holding on to 
one scripture there is helpful to you? No, you have to be armed. That is not the full armor of God, brothers and sisters. If you hold that view, that is not the full armor of God. And what do we have? We have the shield of faith. Oh, wait a minute. Hebrews 11, the faith chapter. By faith, Enoch was taken up that he should not see death. He was taken up that he should not see death. How? By faith faith. And it says that he was commended. He was commended by God for having that faith. So wait a minute. If we have like faith, we being the bride, we're going to be commended for that. Are you going to be commended for not believing that? No, no, you're not. Because he wants to commend those who have faith and just the the just the you know the final push pin in there uh it says we must believe that god exists and that he rewards those who seek him why would he have that right there rewards why would he have that there in those two verses about a rapture of a gentile hmm I want you to hold on to that, okay? All right, brothers and sisters, I'm going to go ahead and I had so much more that I wanted to be able to discuss with you, but I think that uh, we'll go ahead and call this uh, a night for now or a day as it is. I love all of you, and I, I do hope that you understand. I am really wanting you to see this as I get ready to close this out. And I believe so strongly, so strongly this is about to take place that I have these things and I have these printed out and they are strategically set along with a number of Bibles throughout this place. So I have printed out uh, my left behind letters, several different ones that describe like, so in this one, where did they all go? that whole sort of thing. And it has their left with Bibles so that when this event happens, and I am so sure it's happening soon. I mean, so, so very soon that I still want to be able to be sure that even those who are left behind, brothers and sisters, or those who do not have faith, in Jesus yet, but they're going to be able to find out what the truth is because I'm making sure that it's left here for even when we go. Dear Sister Sue, I, I'm so I'm so thankful for you coming in. If 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 you haven't gone to over to Sue Keith Ministries, I encourage you to do that. There's not many of us that actually discuss the 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 three harvest model or the three raptures that are going to be taking place she does such a wonderful job and i am so thankful to know such a dear sister in jesus as as S sister sue and and you are will enjoy it too there's so much that you can glean from their deep studies and i hope that you've done that and i will just say this uh share, please share this message. Please share. I, I don't generally do this, but I'm asking for you because of this late date, because of this late date, I, I, I see that there are those that, that, you know, just down thumbs the, the, the videos. That's okay. All I want you to do is I want you to see it. I want you to see the message and it's going to make an impact on you. You know that, okay? All right. Um, I know, I, dear Sister Sue, she says, oh, thank you, Wayne. I'm getting beat up over this last video. Sister, I, I understand completely, and I'm so proud of you for doing it just the same. That's what we've got to do, and that's what I'm telling you. Everyone, look, 
We're not getting pats on the back for what we are doing. It is tough. It's tough. And we are so late in the game. We have to tell you the truth. As watchmen and watchwomen, we've got to tell you the truth. And if you are left behind, please come back. Please come back. If you are uh, of those that just want to hold to that position so strongly, or if you just want to turn your nose up to it, we are encouraging you and we are using so much scripture to show you. I'm hoping you will take another look. I know you definitely will after the bride is taken. God bless you, brothers and sisters. And for those who don't know Jesus, I pointed it out. Jesus loves you so much more than you could possibly realize. But he's also just. And he wants you to know him. He doesn't want you to continue in this sinful lifestyle. He doesn't want you to continue walking in, uh, in, in this world. He wants you to turn to him. He's paid this penalty for you. A penalty you can't pay for. A penalty that only God in the flesh could do. He did that. He died on that cross for you, was buried and rose again in three days. And he says, here, I love you so much. If you just take this, I give it to you for free. Do that now. It'll be the best decision you ever make, ever in all of eternity. I pray that you will do it now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. God bless you, brothers and sisters, and everyone. Good night for now. Maranatha. See you in the class.